Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to Ash and Shadows Armory Tour. Today I'm covering Germany, and as I was proudly pronouncing last video that I go by these things one by one based on the poll votes, I completely overlooked Germany. And Germany had, in fact, gotten more votes than Israel. So, here it is, Germany. Now let's have a look at what these guys have as different units. Um, starting at the Command Infantry, they now have Command over the NH-90. Again, don't mind the unit model too much. I know that this is a Black Hawk. The NH-90 is a helo that um, is getting more and more widespread in Europe. Um, I believe that the Dutch use it too. At least I know the Dutch Navy uses it. And the Germans apparently use it to transport their commanders around. The Führungsgruppe themselves, uh, nothing too special. Yes, they have a new weapon, the H and K G38. But again, if you have these guys in combat, then something went terribly wrong. Command vehicle, as per the other countries, price reduction to 80. Uh, then now have the Fuchs Foo Foo. Um, I believe that this is something that we already had. The Fuchs command vehicle. Um, it might have a little bit more armor than it did back in the day, but I'm not exactly sure about that. Then you have the M577G. I think this thing may have gotten a little bit more armor than it used to. Leopard 1A map, or AMAP. Uh, this is a pretty heavily armored command tank for a Leopard 1. <coughs> Leopard 1 usually doesn't get to the 16 points of frontal armor. This one does. 16 frontal armor and 10 sides, meaning that this thing can stand quite a bit of artillery. It can, however, not stand rocket artillery and anything that hits it from above, because its top armor is only 5. You're going to really feel the impacts from that thing. The gun on this thing is quite good. Range is good, uh, it's 120mm, meaning that you have a standard 2275 meter range. Pretty good accuracy and pretty much the standard aspects that you expect from this gun. Leopard 2, um, <coughs> or should I say Command Leopard 2. I'm surprised that this thing does not come with the active protection system. Maybe um, Spectre hasn't gotten around to upgrading this thing yet. But if you compare this thing to what the Brits have... I mean, they, yeah, you pay 200 points for it, sure enough. But you get the active protection system there. Uh, looking at the French, which, yes, they are going to get their own video, don't worry. Nothing too severe there. How about the US itself? For 160 points. Yeah, see, I see quite the discrepancy here. Um, the 160-point Abram Tusk gets a lot more armor, more side armor, uh, more back and more top, so this overall is just a far more survivable platform. Gets four more hit points, comes with the machine gun and the APS versus only the MG3 that the Leopard 2 has. So maybe the Leopard 2 is going to need to get an APS. Or if you want to be a bit more um, experimental, put it on the Leopard 1 A map. The other vehicles that we see here, nothing too unusual. Um, the HX44M is new. But, well, it's just the logistics truck. There's no real need to pay too much attention to this thing, as it doesn't have any particularly special stats. Infantry, then. The Deckungsgruppe still have their Carl Gustav M3. Still a five-man squad, and now they have been upgraded to the HNK MP7A1. As for available transports, they come with the Fuchs. They come with the Fuchs Milan. Uh, Milan, still not a very good missile. And considering that you have all this new technology, I'd say it got worse, respectively. M113A1G, uh, just your average five-point transport, nothing really special. The Puma, this is something new. You're going to be paying a lot for this vehicle, 40 points, but you get a whole lot of firepower in return. Because this thing comes with the spike, which does a lot of damage, 23 quite accurate as well, 65%. You get a 30mm um, auto cannon, and you get an active protection system. So if you mix in a couple of these between your, let's say, super heavies or heavy tanks, these will neutralize some of the incoming missiles for you. And they do that while staying alive, thanks to 10 frontal armor. Keep in mind, you are paying 40 points for this, so be very, very wary which particular unit of infantry you want to transport in these. Martyr 1A2, 
I think it got a little bit more armor than it used to at 5 points. Martyr 1A3, um, I don't see any real changes here. And the Martyr 1A5 is a new vehicle. 6 points of frontal armor. Uh, the AGGM is still the Milan F2. It still comes with the RH202 autocannon, which is, well, for an autocannon like that, pretty damn accurate at 40%. And it also comes with a very limited use active protection system, as you only get three charges. Moving on to the Fallschirmjäger. These guys, I believe, always used to come with the HNK G11, so that's still the same. They have the Panzerfaust III, but this one is upgraded. It's the Panzerfaust III IT. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the base stats were. Uh, actually, let's compare them to the Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, what's their difference? Because I don't see any stat change between the Panzer Faust 3 and... Oh, my bad. And the 3 IT. <laughs> there it is. Okay, uh, the 3 IT has better range, better accuracy, better AP, same rate of fire. So you're getting a little bit more punch. Also, these Fallschirmjägers are now classed as heavy units, which means that they do, uh, well, actually, yeah, they do better against infantry. They take less small arms fire. As for their machine gun, or their saw, if you will, they now have the MG4. Rather accurate at 40%, very high rate of fire, good suppression, and combined with this one and the heavy tag, these guys are very tough to deal with if you're going up against them with infantry. Moving on to AA, we have the Fliegerfaust and the Gebirgsjäger. Um, these guys are, well, they're both AA duty, but in a completely different role. See, the Fliegerfaust is just your average anti-air team. They carry the Stinger, good range, uh, very good accuracy, and 5 HE. Nothing special there. The Gebirgsjäger have the same weaponry that the Fallschirmjäger carry. They also have the Stinger, but it's a better Stinger. And they also have an MG3. On top of all that, you get a 10-man squad versus 3, and you get the Heavy Tag. If you combine the Gebirgsjäger with the Fallschirmjäger, you have a very potent combination. You get a lot of firepower between these guys. You get both, with them, or both of them with the Heavy Tag. And you get a combination of anti-tank with the Fallschirmjäger and the Gebirgsjäger will provide AA. Now, this is a good combination, but keep in mind that you will not be shooting down jets before they drop their uh, very, very lethal payload on top of your infantry. As for transports for these guys, one unit that I haven't covered is the Boxer. Very fast off-roader at 105 kph. Very good autonomy, 800 quite heavily armored for a uh, wheeled vehicle as well at six frontal and five side and they have a couple of these uh, active protection system charges next we have the Heimatschützen uh, just your average reservists three points I'm not gonna <laughs> spend too much time on them the Jaeger these guys are pretty much a cheaper variant, uh, far cheaper variant at that, when compared to the Fallschirmjäger. Their weaponry is exactly the same, but what your... Damn it. I'll get this pin and unpin thing right eventually. Um, you do not quite get the same weaponry. Bloody hell, I really fucked up here, didn't I? You get none of the same weaponry. <laughs> You get the HNK G11 versus the HNK G38. Accuracy on the G11 is, of course, far better, but what do you expect? These are regular trained and these are elites. The Jaeger are your front lines. Um, they are going to go down pretty quick, thanks to the fact that they do not have the heavy tag, and I've noticed that that is really going to be a critical feature to have. They have the MG3 and the Panzerfaust 3 in case you want to deal with enemy infantry or sorry enemy vehicles very quickly. Next up, we have the KSK. Um, these I will be contrasting with the Fallschirmjäger because they're another elite squad. Their weapon range is uh, the same, although their anti-helicopter range is worse. But they both pack an SMG, although actually. 
They pack the same millimeter rounds, 4.73, but I'm not sure if that's the accurate weapon or uh, bullet type for the HNK G11. That might be a different caliber weapon. Anyway, um, overall stats here are slightly in favor of the G11 as their accuracy is better, but these guys make up for that with the rate of fire. Their anti-tank weapon is slightly worse and their saw compared to the MG4 uh, it fires the same types of rounds, 7.62, but for some reason the Fallschirm Jäger are capable of carrying far more rounds than the KSK are. These guys have 2400, these only have 960. Their accuracy is slightly higher, rate of fire is a little bit lower, and suppression and HE damage are the same. Um, looking at these guys side by side, I'd say go for the Fallschirm Jäger, simply because they get the heavy tag and their overall weaponry seems to be slightly better. Moving on to, uh, let's go, their transport, 53G, yeah, no changes. Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, you get these guys in the standard Panzer Grenadier and the Panzer Grenadier Heavy. The difference is, of course, the Heavy Tag allows you to stay alive against small arms fire for longer. And other than that, these guys are pretty much the same unit. They have the same level of training, the same stealth values, the same accuracy on the weapons. But the Panzer Grenadier Heavy get the upgraded version of the PZF-3. 25 versus 22, range is better and accuracy is better as I mentioned before. And then finally down here we get the Panzer Jaeger. Um, ATGM team, three man squad, very low range for an ATGM, 2450, it's just the Milan 2. And accuracy, well... Accuracy and AP are really not that impressive. As for the Martyr 2, um, I think the Martyr 2 is getting outclassed to some extent by the Puma. See, the Martyr 2 has less armor. Um, it fires a bigger caliber weapon, meaning that your AP is now 9, which allows you to very quickly decimate enemy transports, if they are of the lighter variety, that is because some of the uh, Red 4 countries can really deploy some heavy IFVs. But what it does not come with is an active protection system, nor an ATGM. So I'd say that for 10 points more, uh, and yes, it's a slightly different role, the Puma would have my preference. And as for the other units, uh, that just about covers it. There is one glaring weakness in this particular infantry section. And that's that they do not have any long-range anti-tank capability. They have no ATGM teams. Yeah, well, okay, they have the Panzerjäger, but really? That's not enough. Or at least, um, if you want to give every single nation an ATGM team, I'd say that these are by far the worst. So let's see how Germany makes up for their anti-tank or for their anti -tank capability. Supports. Flag Panzer Gepard got a bit of a range buff. Fires now at airplanes at 2975. I believe that used to be 2625. The Gepard A1, more accurate, also has a stabilizer, whereas this one does not. And then the Flak Panzer Gepard A2. I mean, it was always in the game, but again, stats have been buffed. Range has been upgraded and comes with the Stingers, which also have better stats than they used to. And if you have seen previous videos, then... Uh, you have seen the F, uh, sorry, the FIM 92F Stinger quite a few times, and you know what it can do. Then we have the Roland and sorry, the Roland two and three. Um, the Roland two is, as far as stats go, outdated. That's why you're only paying 40 points for it. I mean, your high-end Spog is more cost, or at least yeah, more costly than your FRP Roland 2. The thing here is that its range, especially considering it's a radar guided vehicle, is going to be immediately jammed by any Cedar craft and a Cedar craft generally has a range at their anti uh, radiation missile for about seven clicks. Meaning you're going to have issues trying to shoot down enemy aircraft with this particular AA unit. I just steer clear of it. The Roland 3 is a different story altogether. Better HE, far better, or actually slightly better accuracy, but far better range. 
and it carries the same amount of missiles. Again, you're not going to outrange a seat aircraft, but you will at least be able to uh, do a lot more ground coverage with the Roland 3 than you can with the Roland 2. Then you have the FRR Roland 3, which is just a different mode of transportation for that Roland RMS. Artillery wise, we get the Lars. Already had that. We got Lars 2. Again, I don't see any changes here. And we get the Mars. This was always here as well. Uh, good range. Dispersion is quite alright. It's just your um, all round anti, <laughs> anti everything weapon, basically. 11 HE. You soften stuff up before you move into a particular area. And that's where it gets interesting. Germany usually doesn't have a Patriot. But in Ashen Shadows, it does. It's that 9.5 kilometer extremely accurate heli or anti-airplane weapon. Now, the 95% accuracy means that you have a very good chance to hit. But keep in mind that aircraft are fast. Uh, they're capable of jamming your radar, usually at a range which exceeds this. And ECM can really narrow or can really reduce the effectiveness of this accuracy. So yes, it's a Patriot, yes, it's a nice weapon, yes, it has great range and very good HE, but landing a hit with these missiles is not easy. Next up is the Meads. Um, I suppose that this is some sort of abbreviation, but I don't know exactly what it is. It looks a little bit to me like it's the model of the NASAMs, uh, but they only loaded four out of the six missiles. This one comes with two different type of anti-air weaponry. You have the Iris SL. It's more geared towards helicopters, as your helicopter range is 3150. And in case you're dealing with longer range targets, but keep in mind, this thing is radar guided, so you're going to get detected. You can shoot down aircraft at 6.4 kilometers. Very accurate, less HE than the Patriot, but then again, it carries uh, a mix of these two weapons. And overall, I'd prefer the Meads over the Patriot. And here's why. With the Meads I can shoot down helicopters and aircraft. And the aircraft don't detect me because I'm not using radar. The Patriot doesn't do helicopters and it really needs the radar to be effective. Also it is a guided weapon. This thing is a fire and forget. You don't need to be alive for that missile to hit. Next up, in the RD department, we have the uh, Panzer Howitzer 1 M109A3 GA1. Uh, that's a whole mouthful of uh, different abbreviations or different designation for this particular unit. Nothing really too special to say about it, though. It's just your 155mm howitzer. The Panzer Howitzer 2000, or the uh, Panzer Howitzer, I believe it's called, has the RHL-52, very good range on that, 42 clicks if you round it up. Dispersion is quite low, rate of fire for a howitzer is very good at 7 rounds a minute, usually you don't get more than 5, maybe 6, and they come with a 3 round burst. Now I'm not going to demonstrate that in this video, but have a look at the video for the British Armory, so that's the UK Armory. And you can find that the three round burst, as you might expect, fires three separate rounds at the same time, which all lands, well, I was going to say at the same point, but that's not exactly true. They land close to the same location. So if you're trying to snipe a high value target and you don't want to give them a chance to run away, fire off this one, and you do that by disabling the main weapon. Otherwise, it's going to go for the howitzer and not the three round burst. And finally, the Panzer Howitzer M110, uh, it's just your average M110, which still can't shoot straight. Um, where are you going to deliver your package? Somewhere in a dispersion radius of 10 kilometers. No thanks. Um, especially not with a rate of fire of 3 rounds a minute. I don't like that. Tanks then. The Kyler, trusty, and it has now been upgraded with the smoke dispensers. Keep in mind that these uh, smoke dischargers can also be on other vehicles, but you might not see them listed, as Wargame doesn't allow more than three weapons to be shown on a unit card. Doesn't mean it does not have more than three, it's just that they're not shown. 
So when you have a tank in game, always press B and see if you get to fire smoke. Because B generally is the hotkey for deploying smoke charges. Leopard 1A5 does come with smoke chargers, or dischargers rather. Um, very accurate gun, the same that you're expecting from the Leopard. But keep in mind, this is a 40 point tank with an extremely accurate gun. Armor leaves a little bit to be desired at 10 points, but hey, it's a 40 point vehicle. You're paying as much for this Leopard as you are for the Puma. And I know that the Puma has a vastly different role, but at least it has the same level of armor. Next up, the Leopard 1A6. Um, upgraded version of the A5, or 1A5, but it's not that much of a difference. You get slightly more AP. Your armor is exactly the same. Um, and other than that, I don't see any drastic changes here. Yeah, maybe you're sacrificing a little bit of range. 50 kilometers, big deal. Uh, 1A6, just slightly better. Oh, actually, there is one difference. Heat. This weapon fires heat rounds, and this one fires kinetics. That is going to be a difference. Now, I'm not exactly uh, up to snuff on how the heat has been changed in this mod, but there are graphs on that. I haven't quite studied those yet. So I'll link to that in the description down below to show you exactly how that works. Next, the Leopard 2 line, um, starting at only 5 points more than your Leopard 1A6. The Leopard 2 now comes with a lot more armor than the 1A6. Your weapon is just slightly less accurate and you don't fire heat rounds. You just fire standard kinetics. AP, 16 versus 20. So the 1A6 has a far better gun than the Leopard 2, but you don't have the same levels of armor. Keep this in mind. Uh, you cannot just substitute the 1A6 for the Leopard 2, or vice versa. If you want damage, you get the 1A6. If you want survivability, you get Leopard 2. The 2A1, I don't think it's been changed too much. Maybe they shuffled the amount of armor around a bit. And then the 2A4 now comes with uh, quite a nice all-round stats. 19 AP on the gun, 19 frontal armor, and you get a couple of smoke rounds. Literally, just the two of them. Moving on to the Leopard 130. If you really want to do damage to something, you bring a 130mm gun. This thing does 27 AP. It also has some form of active protection system. This is the CICS Heavy and it has 8 rounds for that. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing also comes with smoke dischargers, but you simply don't see them. There's no room to show all that. Frontal armor is very good, at least enough to survive most super heavies for quite a while, while you pick away at their armor with that very, very punchy gun. Leopard 2A5 then. 2A5 used to be 170 points, I think. It's now 135. Comes with one charge for the smoke dischargers. Also has an APS with six rounds on that. Good frontal armor, good side armor, um, very good gun, 70% accurate. AP is a little bit lacking. This is no longer a super heavy, but I'd say it's now been reduced to a heavy. As 22 is not enough to penetrate most frontal of super heavies. 2A6 then uh, does slightly better in that regard. 23 AP on the gun, 23 frontal armor. Again, comes with the APS and probably smoke but you still don't have enough punch to go through frontal armor. You're still going to need the 130 for that. Or the Leopard 2A7. The 2A7 at 24 points of frontal armor can just about do it, but not with every single tank in the game. Because we do have the Legendary Challenger, and the Challenger 2 Mark II has 25 points of frontal armor. So if you're ever going for a blue v blue round, Keep in mind that your Leopard 2A7 will not damage the Challenger 2 at maximum range. You're going to have to close in in order to do your damage. And as you're closing in, you're going to find that the Challenger easily damages you. More and more. And the Challenger has just slightly more hit points than you do. Uh, that covers it for a tank section. Let's see how we can spot targets for these tanks. 
The BGS, I don't see any particular changes here. They don't have any recon vehicle that they come with, unfortunately. Fern Spayer then. Three-man squad, sniper team, uh, HK-53 for last-ditch self-defense, as well as the M72E9 law. Really not that much of a threat up close, but then again, you use these just as a spotter team. Then we have the uh, Iltis Aufklärung, uh, or Aufklärung, I think. Just your standard recon jeep. A better recon jeep is the Fennec. Uh, please don't mind the unit model, because that is not a Fennec. The Fennec is very fast. 120 kph off-road. Very good optics. Uh, medium stealth, as you would expect on a reconnaissance vehicle. If you are using it in a passive reconnaissance role, make sure you disable these weapons. Otherwise, it will give its position away at 1.2 km range. And especially if it decides to start firing at a tank, you might find that your Fennec is not going to be around much longer. PAH Tiger 2, or PAH 2 Tiger. Um, as you expect, still a very, very nice multi role scouting helo. No main gun, unfortunately, but you do have weapons that can target both air and ground targets. For air, we have the Stingers which still have a pretty good range, 2800, but they are by now outranged by some of the other AA platforms, or uh, air-to-air as well, so Gila-mounted AA weapons. The Snap Rocket Pods, I don't think that these guys have been changed too much. And the Pars 3 LR, um, against ground targets, you're going to have to be picky about when you want to get in close to fire these, because their range is 2800, and if you try to punish a Tunguska, for example, it's just going to deny that and shoot you down. However, if you get one of these missiles away, you're going to inflict a lot of damage, as they might not look harmful at 17 AP, but they're top attack. And this means that 17 suddenly gets you in a whole different ball game. Um, let me show you why. If you are engaging, the Armata, and this is almost my favorite tank to target, or use as an example for Blue for the kill. The Armata has a top armor of 8. This thing has an AP of 17. So you're going to do a lot of damage against that tank. And you don't need to stick around to see how it's going to hit, as you have a fire and forget stat, which is going to allow you to just quickly scoot off after you fired that missile. And you don't even have to park yourself to fire it as the stabilizer can take care of that. You only have four. Pick your targets wisely and be wary of active protection systems. If a tank has not used that yet, then all of these uh, probably expensive missiles to resupply are just going to go right into the APS and the tank is going to be looking up at you and just ignore you. Other reconnaissance options that we have. Uh, the courts. I don't think it's been changed. The Recon Leopard 1A1, again, I don't think it's been changed. Uh, it's never been a spectacularly good tank, but for 30 points, it's alright. It gets the job done. The Lux and the Lux A1, this one is now an Eland, which means it's better at spotting anti-air. Overall, um, they're just good reconnaissance vehicles. Very good, very fast, medium stealth, auto cannon. What more do you need on a recon vehicle? Vehicles then. I'm not going to go over the transport vehicles. Most of those have been covered. The Jaguar 2. A little bit low AP for my taste. 17, sorry, 21. Uh, range is pretty low. And considering that most tanks have far more armor than 21, you're just not going to be very effective. You're going to be doing one point of damage Again, I'm not exactly sure if that's correct, but by the old model, you're always going to do some damage. Um, and if your heat, or if your AP on the heat is lower than the target, you only do one damage. Again, I don't know exactly how Ashen Shadows handles that. The Jaguar Pars is a whole different weapon. It still has a good range, 2800, but this one carries 12 of those top attack fire and forgets. Now normally I would just ignore the Jaguar. Um, I wouldn't really use these things in my deck, but I would definitely use the Jaguar Pars. 
as fire and forget anti-tank missiles are rare, but these things do carry them, and they carry a good number of them as well. The reload time is 5 seconds. Um, I'd say fire one, track the missile to the target, and see if the target is still far enough away. If it is, wait for 5 seconds to reload, fire another one, and get the hell out. Don't guide these things, they're fire and forget. Next, uh, oh, aren't you cute? Uh, this is the Ozelot. This used to be uh, a vehicle which had a tow missile on it. Nowadays, it's uh, thankfully gotten an upgrade to the amount of autonomy that it had, because these things were atrocious at that. They have 500 km autonomy. Um, they are just cheap anti-air vehicles. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing in the vehicle tab. But maybe they weren't. Uh, there wasn't a slot available for this unit in support. I'm not exactly sure. We'll see. Uh, oh, there's even a better Puma. Holy shit! The Puma FSV still carries the spike. Uh, this one. Hang on. Why is the Puma FSV better than the Puma? What is that about? Oh, it carries more spikes. Uh, it carries twice the amount of ammunition for the main gun, for the autocannon, and it has the same amount of CICS light APS. Front armor is the same, autonomy is the same. So yeah, you're paying for more ammo and uh, more HGMs. And I suppose that you can just get this thing from the vehicle tab, as opposed to the Puma, which only comes with transports for infantry. Murder VTS-1. Um, it's an okay unit. Don't expect any miracles from this one, especially considering that while you might be able to go through the armor, a tank only has to fire at you once, your range is a little bit lower, and even if you're going up against transports, they generally now have quite a bit of armor and quite a bit of hit points. So the Murder VTS-1, while I used to use this thing to engage vehicles such as transports before the enemy was able to occupy a town, I wouldn't quite do the same thing now. Not with the Mortar VTS-1. The mortars have been moved over to the vehicle tab. So we got the uh, HS-30 as well as the 113. Nothing too special here. They carry the same weapon, the Tempella. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you're paying so much more for with the 113. I just don't see it. Because I'm not paying 18 points for an amphibious mortar, which has slightly, no, actually has the same amount of armor. Uh, it carries 57 rounds versus 63. I don't see it. I don't see the allure of this particular mortar versus the HS-30. And finally, the weasels. Uh, yeah. You know that saying, pop goes the weasel? Uh, that's because this thing is not survivable. <laughs> it only has two frontal armor. Same probably for the Ocelot. Ten, two frontal armor. This thing unfortunately did not get an autonomy upgrade, so you're still stuck with very low range. Meaning that in a practical application, this thing is really only useful in a role as base defense, where they don't have to move and they can just make sure that you're not getting some sort of recon team that annihilates your command vehicle. The Toe 2. This one definitely still has a punch, but again, poor autonomy. Uh, I'm going to skip over it. And the Weasel 2. What exactly are you trying to be? Um, this is an auto cannon, A pretty punchy auto cannon at that, at 6 AP. Good rate of fire, 160 rounds a minute. Carries a decent supply of them. I'm not too sure why I'd want this vehicle. If you give me the choice of buying a Weasel 2 or a Puma, I'll have a Puma, please. Because it's just better for 40 points. Autonomy, better. Armor, better. Main gun, um, slightly less. I mean, 5 versus 6. Accuracy, better. APS, HGM. I'll take a Puma over a Weasel anytime. Helos, then. Well, some of the Helos. We already covered most of them. These ones, uh, standard 105p BSH, anti-air helo, or air-to-air -air helo if you want to be exact. Just a couple of stingers. Uh, nowadays they're quite outclassed. 
especially if you're going up against something like China, which is going to come at you with, for example, the CAIC Z10 with an air-to-air -air range of 3.3 kilometers. And you're going to try and take those down with a range of 2,800. Yeah, good luck. Even if you get into range and you get a shot off, you're not going to kill it because this thing has eight points of frontal, or sorry, eight strength and armor. Whereas the Z10 is going to fire back at you once, probably hit you thanks to 70% accuracy, and you just die. Period. End of helo. So I'm not too big of a fan of these. Uh, the Germans definitely have some nice ATGMs, and as I was asking earlier, why the hell do we not have ATGMs on the infantry? Well, they have ATGMs, very good ones at that, at almost everything else. The PAH-1 and the 1A-1, they carry slightly different weapons. Uh, they carry the HOT-3 versus the PARS-3. I'd say go for the PARS-3. Yes, you're paying slightly more, but you get so much more for it. You get the same amount of accuracy, a better stabilizer, less AP, but a top attacker, fire and forgets versus semi-actives, and that range is definitely going to make a difference. Use the uh, PAH-1. And then the helos, these are just your transports. Air tab then. Looks like Germany finally got their Eurofighter. This one comes with the medium range slash short range Iris T air to air missile and the longer range AIM 152 AAAM. 11 and a half clicks, or sorry, 11 clicks, but their accuracy is a little bit low compared to some of the other nations. The Eurofighter Typhoon uh, P 1E is um, multi roll. Engages targets with the JDAM at good range, 5.25 clicks, and for self-defense has a couple of these Iris T short to medium range anti-air or air-to-air -air missiles. I wouldn't go dogfighting with these things, but I wouldn't want to dogfight with them either, because their turn radius is good, they have 55% ECM, they're going to see you coming from miles away, and they have a really good chance to hit you with 90% accuracy. The Peace Rhine, then. Um, Peace Rhine used to be a very good platform if you were looking to take down a tank. They still are, but the Maverick is only... Uh, or it only comes with two missiles, and that could be a problem, especially with all of those APSs around. Again, it makes tanks far more survivable, especially if you're flying at them with stuff like this, which only carries two missiles. 29 AP means that if you do hit something, it's bound to be hurting, but the challenge is getting there and getting a hit in. F4F KWS. Um, you could say it's the weaker brother of the Eurofighter. They have uh, better speed. That's interesting. 1350. ECM is worse. Again, carries four Fire and Forget Iris Ts and only three versus six. AM-152s. Sorry, um, this is the AMRAM. My bad. Their range is worse for the long-range air-to-air missile, but these are fire and forgets. These are semi-actives. Then, um, something you might not expect for the Germans is the MiG-29G. Medium to long-range air-to-air weaponry, the R-77. A couple of cluster bombs at 3.5 km range. And again, top attack, meaning that this 8 AP might not look impressive, but it's definitely going to hurt you. And overall, 45% ECM, uh, an unusual airspeed of 1,077 kilometers per hour. Not really sure what that's about. I'd be careful sending these things into combat. However, they have a better chance of doing damage to a tank than the Peace Rhine. Because the Peace Rhine's uh, Mavericks will get shot down. The IBL-755 cluster bombs do not. Then we have the Tornadoes. The Tornado IDS, still your bomber. Uh, three and a half clicks range. Speed is good. ECM is, nah, 35%. But then again, you could always use the other Tornado to escort the first Tornado, the IDS, to its target. With a nice amount of jammer pods, um, a very good range on the AGM-88, you're going to be taking out enemy radar platforms but the enemy will usually deploy more than two. 
So you're going to have to be careful. Make sure you have an escort for the MiG-29, for the Peace Rhine, uh, potentially even for your Eurofighter. And then, naval. Uh, let's see if Germany still has a navy. And the answer is no. Just no, it doesn't have one. Which is interesting, because if you look uh, purely at the Americans, you're going to find that they do have a navy. So, let me test something. If I'm going to have a blue for Germany deck... Ah, okay, good. So now I can call in naval units. They're just not part of the uh, naval section for Germany, for some reason. And they are part of the US section. I'm not exactly sure what that's about, but they do have ships. And the ships I have already covered in some of the other videos. So, that's Germany for you. Let me know if you have any good replays for Ash and Shadows, because I would love to cover those on the channel. Uh, be sure to send those in through the description down below. There's a link there that can get you or can get the replay to me. Make sure you mark it. Mark it Ash and Shadow so I know it's a mod and not a base game because I cannot replay the standard or I cannot view the standard replays or at least I don't think so when I'm running Ash and Shadows. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon for more videos.